What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 252 of Opinions May Vary. I am your host, JR. I have my co-host with me, Alex. Hello! Joining us this week uh, via the Skype machines, um, the man with his very own uh, Wikipedia page, it is our friend uh, Jamie Noguchi. <laughs> I forgot about that shit. <laughs> Hi, what's going on? <laughs> Jamie, thanks so much for coming on. I like I learned many things while looking into you and i was like holy sh- yo he has his own wikipedia page and i was like yo super r fight has their own wikipedia page and like yeah. and then i'm looking over like yo chris hastings has worked with them and we we had chris hastings on a couple weeks ago and now i wish i could have been like hey chris you know the super r fight guys we totally know them <laughs> <laughs> or rather we know them don't know if they know us but they humor us and they they let us talk to them um <laughs> Pretty but, much, yeah, it, yeah. It's all Kineticon, man. It's like a big Kineticon nerd family. It's all good. But um, we we met Jamie last... Was last year the first time that we saw you at Kineticon? I think so. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I used to go a bunch of times, but like for the one year, um, I wasn't able to make it because uh, we just had our daughter. And then the following year was the first time I went to San Diego, Um comic-con as a vendor mm-hmm. so uh, i missed out in two years and you guys must have been there those two yeah yeah um because i know the other guys have been talking about you guys like <laughs> those fuckers did do that podcast that sounds about that right sounds, that's pretty that's accurate fair. <laughs> god they asked us again it bothers us <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah yeah for the record we've um, had uh We've had a couple guys from Super Art Fight on in in like way back, like two years ago. We had Brandon Chalmers and Mike Bracco on, and then right before Kineticon last year, yeah, yeah, right before Kineticon last year, we had Brandon Chalmers again with Marty Day, um, and uh, all in all, the whole gang, some of the nicest people we've had the pleasure of talking to, mm-hmm. um, and then always, of course, entertaining shows. And then last year was the first time because we've we've heard about. Jamie Noguchi, because were you one of the creators of Super Art Fight? Uh, yeah, it was uh, me and Nick DeFabio. We right. kind of started this whole mess. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like we'd always heard of of this mythical, you know, like, <laughs> um, but like last year we finally got to see like it in action, and like there was the whole thing with with um, Cyanide and Happiness, and and mm-hmm. and that fantastic. Uh, I can't even think of a good adjective for it. it was- Wait, <laughs> that, one of the shows, there was a moment when I think it was CC Shinobi, like, decided to... That was two years ago. Like, he went to, like, do, like, a front roll onto the stage, <laughs> like a little somersault. And one oh, of the guys nice. was like, don't break the stage, don't pull a Jamie. And I was like, has Jamie, has he broken the stage before? <laughs> I, I have broken the stage before. <laughs> um, yeah. I Well, so, like... I, I I watch a lot of wrestling and whenever they whenever they do a punch or something like that they, since the floor since since the ring has like a a wood floor underneath mm-hmm. um they always do like a little hop or a little jump to kind of emphasize the punch so when I jump on stage that's kind of what I do like a small jump and s- slam my feet on the bit ground bit of a, a stomp lot. yeah um and uh sometimes the the tech crew doesn't quite set the stage up right <laughs> Or let us know that we're not supposed to do that. So, yeah. I've hey, cracked a few. <laughs> it happens. It happens. We've all done a, had a good... I don't know what I was going to say. So, anyways, um, if, if you're looking for more... in, Like, uh, you know, obviously you can get more information from Super Art Fight by, you know, the Google machines. Or you can go back and check out our episodes um, in the past with uh, with other members. Um a lot of fun. If if they come around near you, go just go see one of the shows. Um, yeah, but Jamie, you do a lot of other stuff too. Like trying to <laughs> like uh, googling your name. I think I got like four. What do I have right now? I have one, two, three. I have four different tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> um, just with like all the different stuff you do, which is um what we were probably going to focus more on today because like we've talked at length about Super Art Fight. I mean, I'm, we're probably going to revisit it because it's <laughs> really fun. Um, mm-hmm. But I also wanted to touch on like your personal stuff because, like, I remember at Kineticon last year, because um, you guys all set up your you know own individual tables there as well as because like there's the yeah. Super Art Fight stuff and mm-hmm. then there's your individual stuff like all the all your personal stuff that you guys work on you know as individuals and um, 
looking through all your stuff, I remember Colin, I think, I can't remember if Colin bought one of your, I think he bought one of the books. Um, but like, if he didn't, he was really stressing about it. <laughs> right, right. Because like you and oh, Colin wow. kind of meshed. Like Colin, for the record, Colin was the one who wanted to buy your shirt, yeah. the one that you were wearing oh, cool. okay. off <laughs> your off your back when it was in the middle of Hartford, and it was like sixty degrees. It was chilly that night, wasn't it? Bit, I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Or was it really hot? And well, I think you were considering. <laughs> so it's a- yeah, I would have done it. There was a deal I, 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 being the, made. There wasn't like a spare shirt for you to put on instead. <laughs> no, Brandon had one, but it was like in his room or something or in his car. I can't remember what it was. Um, but like it, it got pretty far along in the process of a potential sale. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of fizzled and we were all like, okay, we just had a lot of barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, like looking at all it like essentially what I was getting at is uh, you have a lot of stuff. And I want to talk to you about your stuff. <laughs> okay. At um, some point, someday I'll make some money at this stuff so I can stop doing so many of it. But <laughs> I'm okay with like even just looking at. Oh, we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So, Jamie, let's 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 talk about you and 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 how you got into this. Um, okay. You know, obviously, with Super Art Fight, you are, are you dabble in the arts. Um, mm-hmm. like, is that something that you've done forever? Is that something you went to school for? Is that, you know, how, how do you, how do you get into this whole thing? Uh, pretty much. I think I've been, I've been drawing ever since I could pick up, um, a crayon to make a mark with. So, <laughs> um, I went to college. I actually went to college for history. Um, cause I had the dumb idea that I wanted to be a lawyer at some point. Um, and then uh, in my junior year, I th- I thought that that was a stupid idea, so I did art studio, um, and uh, I guess when I when I graduated, I I didn't really have a direction for what to do, um, and web comics were just starting to come out, um, so this was like I graduated in ninety nine, and I think ninety nine two thousand is when like a lot of the early web comics were coming out, like um, Apple Geeks was a big thing back then. Um, Mac Hall was a big thing back then. Mm. Penny Arcade and PVP were just starting out. Um, and so um, I was always interested in comics, just reading them and stuff, but I never thought that I would be able to do my own until people started posting shit on the internet. So I was like, well, I'll give this a try. <laughs> yeah. um, and that has led to a to many years of suffering and anguish. Um, <laughs> and doing yeah, what you I mean, love. That's kind of where it all started. <laughs> One of the things that, that really opened my eyes, because I'll meet an artist, we, we go to a lot of conventions where I'll, Instagram will like show you, oh, if you like this kind of like comic book art, here's more of that. And, you know. Suggestions. And yeah, that. like getting to watch you perform on stage and, and draw on the huge canvases and then like, oh, yeah, stuff to sell at his table. And then I'm watching Instagram and I'm like, now I'm seeing like sculptures of minifigures. And, oh, yeah. And there's like, you know, like, if it's not quick tutorials, it's like, it's a time lapse of like working on stuff. And, and I was like, hang on, this is like, this is multifaceted stuff here. And yeah. it's, that's, it intrigued me more that like you're, you're putting forth effort towards so many different things instead of like, Oh, I'm just going to draw Superman again, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I've, I've always wanted to make toys. Um, I, I think, uh, I was introduced into the, the like the urban vinyl scene, um, when I was working at a e-learning place um, in Arlington, uh, one of my coworkers was really big into like the kid robot stuff, mm. um, and so I've I've been following it for a while, and I've I've tried my hand at a couple of customs, but um, nothing as cool as making your own toys and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and with the advent of 3D printing being so ubiquitous now uh, mm-hmm. everyone can get their hands on a 3d printer easily yep. um so like this year i kind of want to try to get more into sculptures and 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 um collectibles and, and toys and things like that just because it's something i've always wanted to do and so um this year i decided not to wait any longer <laughs> and just to fucking do it so. right <laughs> yeah we're gonna touch on that by the way we're gonna get into. <laughs> I was planning on getting into the Jamie Noguchi system. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Um, yeah, but there are there are a lot of artists that I've um, been admiring who are who are making their own sculpts and making their own custom toys and things like that. And 
Um, the only difference between what they're doing and what I'm doing is that they've actually done it. So, <laughs> right. um, you know, I, I freelance full time, so it's a little bit more difficult to, um, carve out time during the day. But, um, this year I'm going to try to make my best effort to get more personal projects out there. So is, uh, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but like when you're doing these kinds of figures, like, is there a, a larger goal or it's like, well, I just want to see how far I can get and like what I could make compared to, I want to produce 50 of these and sell them at shows and whatnot. Right. Right. Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Like, um, there's a, there's a company that I work with. Um, I think they're out of China called Ownage and they're known for doing high quality reproductions of, of, um, Z brush sculpts and things like that. So, hmm. um, I, so like when you, when you get a, when you get a thing from them, they offer to do resin kits and things like that. So, um, with this monster cutie skull that I'm working on currently, um, my intention is to do like a small run and see how well they sell online and at shows, um, and just test the waters and see if there's interest there. And if there is to keep, you know, keep pushing it. Um, yeah, because I, I don't know, I, I, a lot of my friends have that one thing that they're really good at and yeah. is, is doing well for them. I haven't quite figured out what that is for me yet, so. Because <laughs> looking over your Instagram images and, like, I at some point had trouble telling, like, which was a digital image. And then I would see, like, the physical piece and I'm like, did, did you actually sculpt that? Or is that, like, a rendering that I can't tell if it's real or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, I think the one with the um, the cute uh, the cute little girl with the pouty face that's that's an, a physical object, mm-hmm. and um, I'm not. My wife is in the other room, but that's our birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but hopefully, she's not paying attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> when, when when is her birthday? It's in March, um, but it takes a while to paint. So, so right. what what are the odds of her listening to this? Um, should very I very little should, very okay little. okay good good because I, I was gonna say i could bleep that <laughs> I, I could or i could just hack it i can get it out no 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 okay nah, nah, gotcha nah. <laughs> gotcha i didn't want to i don't want to ruin anything you know because like i wasn't sure if her birthday was like the day after tomorrow because this will be up tonight <laughs> um with, um, with yeah like yeah, I'm, I'm interested in doing some more collectible stuff so um there there are a couple of projects that i've been hired out to through my instagram which is kind of cool oh, that's um, cool so i'm for those for those guys i just do the sculpts and then they figure out how to print it so um the rest is on them <laughs> <laughs> that's really neat i'm i'm glad i i never expected like considering like instagram because i'm really late to the game for instagram me too (laughs) and it's a matter of like so many people are just using it it's like they're sharing what they're doing and they're sharing what they're making and i lose track of like it's still a business opportunity right like i contacted you through instagram and be like hey can Mm -hmm. you do our show that's what you caught me off guard with that too because like (laughs) when i when i showed up tonight to do this i was like how'd you hit up jamie by the way like facebook or like through other like art fight contacts he was like instagram and i was like that's a first <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you, you can kind of tell how often someone's you know how active someone is and how much they're publishing and what they're doing and if they're doing a bunch of different things you can kind of follow along and be like oh they have a patreon and they're making these figures and they're doing these these like speed demos of of what they're drawing and there's the more things you could take in it's like i'm more and more interested in what they're making now right right mm-hmm that's that's kind of the goal. I'm trying to I'm trying to up my shit this year. I'm trying to get that next level. <laughs> I will say uh figures are at least a way to get I Alex got me into that whole like thing. The vinyl figure. Yeah. cuz I remember a couple years ago going to New York Comic Con and I was it, I was like I was I was a little green, you know, I was I was mm-hmm. new. I was baby baby face to it, I guess. I, that's a wrestling term. That's a wrong <laughs> that's a wrong term. Anyways, and like I Alex is a grizzled veteran. He knows what he's doing. He hauls ass and he's buying all this stuff and I'm like, "What are these? They look they're all you bought the same thing but four different colors?" <laughs> and and <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and? Obviously. Um, and These like transparent hello. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like, uh, the last two New York Comic Cons, I have found myself trying to hunt down that, that creator. I'm, um, that's uh, Eric Scarecrow. I'm, I'm, I like his stuff. Um, mm-hmm. at, like, Al- I saw Alex's Eric Scarecrow. I'm looking at it right I'm, now. I'm sitting below 10 uh, figures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, and, Which and, like, it's the same two figures, but different colorways. <laughs> <laughs> He's not joking. He's not joking. Um, some of them are only recently coming out of the packaging, having been bought five years ago. Uh, not quite that far. Oh, okay. At least, okay. Like three. That's fair. It's well, like our our friend Joe is like, oh, Alex is really like business savvy. I'm like, couldn't sell these. I'm just going to keep them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that you ever wanted to sell them. Yeah, true. No, there's a, there's a point to that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because we're good people. Anyways, so like I, you know, I've bought some of his stuff. I even my cats uh, when we were moving into our our current home. Um, my cats knocked over one of my, uh, like they busted one of my bookshelves and one of my Eric Syracuse, uh, lost its head. Literally the oh, head, no. the head broke off mm-hmm. and, um, he released a new colorway of it, uh, this past summer and my wife, and it was like a rare, like they're only 10 made, I think mm-hmm. of the new colorway. And my wife got me a new one. Um, oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh my God. It She's was amazing. Yep. She really is. <laughs> um, so like I have a couple of his and like this year at New York Comic Con walking around, I think there was four different things, like all like different, you know, vinyl slash resin figures that I was like, I I've gone to look for that Popeye one like four times. I cannot find it. There was one it was like a skeleton of Popeye. Yeah. And it was so re anyways. And it was reasonably priced. That's what got me. But like That's it's really cool. It's such a like that that I like that stuff. And it's, like hearing that people I admire are like potentially making stuff like you know it's <laughs> mm-hmm. it has me excited because <laughs> i can give them my money in exchange for stuff that i might like oh that's awesome <laughs> to put it as bluntly as possible but um that's that's neat to hear that you're getting into that and like you know because mm-hmm. like we, we've seen your like you know you're you we're gonna get into the books as well and looking at like your shop here amart like um, if we happen to see you guys again at Kineticon this year, I'm probably going to buy all of your pins. Um, oh, cool. Oh, my God, the pins. The pins are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Like, we just... Uh, Alex has been into it for a little bit now, but, like, we're just going through one subculture to another subculture. Yeah. Like, now we're on pins. It's um, as... When you're a collector and you can't collect just one thing, it gets bad, uh, but in a great way. Because, <laughs> like... Cause, well, yeah, like the pins, the pin thing kind of took off. Um, a friend of mine, Nick DeFabio, who um, started Super Art Fight, we we started Super Art Fight together. He's gone in this whole pop art direction, and he he's making a killing with the pins. Like <laughs> he's the guy who got me into it. He was like, "Here, you should try doing this. You know, sell a couple." He's a monster. Like he has limited edition <laughs> versions. Monster. He has people who regularly follow him. He has a Facebook group of like I think. 4,000 plus people who are who are there to collect all of his pins mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. um, it's really amazing to see how this pin culture has kind of like launched some people's careers <laughs> off of pins you know like whoever yeah by the way you can get to your uh, opinions may vary pin uh, we do have uh, pins of our own it's, it's our nice little <laughs> logo there you can email alex at omv pot anyways 20 um, years ago <laughs> i don't think pins would be a thing to be honest <laughs> no, it all hooks back around man <laughs> But, like, I just got into that, and, like, now I have, like, a pin case hanging on my wall that I have my, my pins pushed into. Um, <laughs> though I'm missing my Ellie one. I lost that one on my honeymoon. But, um, but anyways, um, coming up with the ideas for your stuff, Jamie, because, like, you mentioned, like, web comics um, earlier with, like, you know, uh, PvP and Penny Arcade, and now getting into that, like coming out with something that's that's new because like penny arcade does the video game thing right and like i think i've seen maybe i can't of course i can't name any um (laughs) but like everyone's doing the video game thing yeah like there's a lot of video game web comics Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of gaming web comics there's a lot of pop culture like coming up with something that is fresh you know, like not just a podcast where you talk about movies and comics like this, you know, like that'll just get, it's just white noise. Um, 
like do you have you ever struggled with that or like going into it did you have something you're like i i I have this idea i need to run with it you know this this is something that i know will at least be you know like fresh and new like what was your mindset going into like when you were creating um i didn't really think about anything new because at this point it's it's really just telling the same story but a different way Mm -hmm. um so like i don't know there's only like four or five original stories and how you mix and match and it's it's kind of the way to do it um so when i was coming up with the idea for my web comic um yellow peril um i i was working at an office at the time and i hated it and i was like well this is a perfect time to mine it for humor (laughs) and um i wanted to one of my favorite movies is office space um so i wanted to take that that style of office humor but like um and and of course the the show the office but have it star minorities and have a lot of cursing in it and stuff (laughs) um so so that's where the idea for yellow peril came from um just because um it was a a slightly different take on the office humor genre, at least from what I'd seen so far. Um, and, and that's kind of how I started that. I don't, I should have probably picked something that was more popular, uh, because, um, I, I think I started in 2010. Yeah. I was just about to say you're coming up on your, on your seven year anniversary right, right now. Yeah, and you know, traffic never really took off like I was hoping it would. Um, I was, I, I thought I was doing everything right, you know, like um, for the first like five or six years, I hadn't missed an update. You know, it was hmm. pretty steady on my schedule. Um, I was doing color. Um, you know, I was interacting with fans. I was going to conventions, and you know, I was all over social media and stuff like that. And the it never really took off in terms of readership. Um, so I don't know, but I felt like it was, these were things I needed to get out anyway. So, you know, if you go into web comics expecting money, <laughs> you should probably plan a little bit better than I did. <laughs> Would, for the record, you can go and check with the, the web comic we're, we're talking about. You can go to ypcomic.com, um, and you can check it out. There's the handy, the handiest button in the world, the first button. Yeah. Put put a first button there. Just pop it right. It, it's you can go right to the first, I, and it starts out like you have my attention immediately. Like the first panel of this of this comic from February first of two thousand ten. I was like, okay, cool. Yep, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, cursing, Alex just man. saw it. <laughs> I'm a simple you person. Have big curse words. Otherwise, people don't give a shit. <laughs> everybody a... curses in offices but like comics that take place in an office never depict that so i was like what the fuck is this shit about yeah you know? <laughs> it's when like when offices are depicted it seems like everyone's really calm and mellow or like too calm and mellow yeah or, like the fire is like you know really buried it's like i'm sure that's not how it's, i mean i've never worked in an office thank you uh but you're not missing anything <laughs> No, I I do the other work that hurts my back, so it's I don't know if I have it any better or worse or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Office life, am I right? Am I right? Anyway, sorry, I just got really depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, um, as as far as as YP comic. Uh, or as Yellow Peril, I'm just reading the, <laughs> the the hyperlink right now. As Yellow Peril goes, is there like a, you know, is there an end to that story? Is that something that you you uh, you know plan on continuing until you just you know like just run out, or did you have like an ending in mind um, when you started? I I had uh, landmarks that I wanted to hit, like certain parts of the story, um, certain relationships, the way they would plan out, and. Um, I didn't really have an ending to it and I didn't really have a way to get to those points. So I just kind of would set markers and, and meander my way to where I thought I could go. Um, now I've, I've kind of switched my focus on the comic. It's going to be more um, single strips that are self-contained. So, you know, up until this point, 
it was all like a very continuous story like their work life bleeding into their personal life bleeding back into the work life and things going on work and changing and um, deciding to go freelance and that kind of stuff so there was like a, a continuous narrative and um, now I'm going to be doing more uh, self-contained strips um, when I can like I've, I have this huge project that's been kicking my ass and it will kick my ass for the next two months so hmm. I've had to put my comic on hiatus again which is always great for traffic let me tell you <laughs> um, <laughs> It's very, very disappointing. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be more self-contained stuff and um, not just with the the main cast. Um, like uh, I did a, a comic about um, there was an announcement or there was a, a leaked script of Disney's live action Mulan where the main character was going to be this white missionary from <laughs> Europe who saves Mulan. And I was like, no, fuck that. So I did a whole comic with uh, Mulan reading the spec script and saying, yeah, no, this isn't my story. Fuck you. Um, so like more <laughs> racial issues when it comes to like representation of Asians and Hollywood and other things like that. So um, still off the sea humor, but also like commentary on social issues and things like that. Um, yeah. So. Well, I mean, we can hope that maybe the major's Scarlett Johansson body will be destroyed, and then she'll get <laughs> she'll move into her real Asian body instead. You know, man, that it's so weird. <laughs> the, the, it's it's so weird because like you the they interviewed the the editor of Kadansha, and he was like, "Oh, I think it's great that Scarlett Johansson has been cast because she's the exact type of person that we had in mind when we were developing this comic." And if you think about it, like a lot of manga, a lot of anime, there's this weird trend in Japanese um, entertainment mm -hmm. that's not tokusatsu of like self erasure. Like it's very difficult to find an Asian face in anime. Like, um, and they they very rarely talk about being Japanese unless it's you know a period piece like Kenshin mm -hmm. or. Um, something like Attack on Titan where there's one Japanese person who's like the uber Japanese person who can do everything better than everyone else. Right. <laughs> um, but like when it comes to, you know, sci science fiction like Gundam or um, any of those other shows, yeah. it's very difficult to see like a straight up Asian person like Shaw's novel. He's definitely a white dude. And if there was a live action movie and they cast char as a white dude you can't really argue against that mm -hmm. um so i don't know man it's yeah, like i've had to pick and choose my battles over which things to get upset over right and <laughs> like ghost in the shell is this weird thing where it's very clear it takes place in neo tokyo but like you know, you watch the cartoon, you watch the anime, you read the manga, and you don't know what ethnicity the major really is. Mm. She's kind of this, like, hot chick with big tits. And that's <laughs> her descriptors. Yeah. Like, that's her physical descriptors. <laughs> so, I don't know. I it's It's been very strange being a Asian nerd. Because on the one hand, you're excited about all this stuff. And then on the other hand, like, it's disappointing because you're not in any of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Someone brought up Bateau, and I was yeah, like, and I was like, well, you can't see his eyes anyway, so yeah, <laughs> we're not sure what he would be. I'm not sure yeah, it really and, matters. In in every version that he's depicted, he's this big dude with no hair. Uh, you can't tell what ethnicity is, so he could be played by anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's been weird. Last year was weird. This year's gonna be weird. <laughs> You don't say. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring it down, but <laughs> <laughs> we're we're there. Let's just get, we'll get through it. <clears throat> so, uh, also, your book Forty Seven Bronin, that's yeah. completely different from Yellow Peril. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, just uh, the name is so funny. <laughs> it is. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I made the mistake of asking friends during the holiday season for guest strips. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And then the holidays came and I never got anything. And I was like, I probably should not have asked around Christmas time. Hmm. Um, but I, you know, Hazel was going to be born soon, like December to January. Um, and I still had the, 
the uh, self-delusion that it was important to keep up a, a schedule with my comics. So I was like, I need something as filler so I can take a break and help take care of Hazel uh -huh. and then, but still have stuff out there so I don't disappear from the internet. And so um, the Keanu Reeves version of 47 Ronin had just come out. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad. <laughs> That's what I heard. It was so I bad. I did not hear good things about... Didn't Adam Warrock <gasps> do a song? Yeah. yeah. About like so many Ronin yeah. or something like there that? There's so many Ronin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many Ronin. I got like 47 Ronin. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Adam Warrock um, did do a song he, for uh Super He's so Arvite. good. Like, you just, you just the best. I, I got him to do a 47 Ronin song too. Oh, um, Really? I have to find it. I, I meant to post it. I don't know if it's posted anywhere, but I will once I look it down. But yeah, I, I asked him to do a song about this because I was like, this, this is too perfect. <laughs> um, that man so it's great. Brilliant. So yeah, I saw, yeah. me and my brother saw it in the theater because we tend to watch shitty movies together. <laughs> it's what we do. Um, and it was so, it was so bad. Like, it was so bad. So I thought if they could fuck up a retelling of this legend, I'll, I'll do my own and I'll make them all dude bros because... <laughs> The samurai were the dude bros of that era, so. Okay. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, at some point this year, um, I'm going to be doing a bro Jimbo, <laughs> which will be a bro version of Yo Jimbo. Um, awesome. Because that's where we're at now. It sounds like I need to read up on, on Yo Jimbo then. Yeah. 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 Just so I can understand bro, bro Jimbo. It's, it's I mean, is there the anyone that you Kurosawa couldn't? Movies. Is is there anyone that couldn't be turned into a bro, like like a dude bro, and it wouldn't be funny? Like I think it would always be funny. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any I think example. So. I know all the ones I can think of are funny. I, I just immediately go to like Dragon Bro Z, the the bro hiram, the writers of Brohan. <laughs> Attack on Broton. Does that does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I had him. Bro, tack on Titan. The city. <laughs> these are all. These are all copywritten. Bros, don't, don't bros in the shell. <laughs> bro in the shell. Oh my god. <laughs> Try bro. Brost in the shell. <laughs> Try oh <my> bro. <laughs> <laughs> Cow uh, bebop. Cow oh, I like that one. That needs to happen. <laughs> so there you go. We're just we're spitting out just years of material for you down the line, Jamie. Like, yeah, man. If I just pops that collar, it's great. <laughs> this is what I've become. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, that that stupid little book that I did, outsells all of my other things. Whenever I go to a convention, so it's like I should obviously be doing more of this dumb shit. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we can transition that into, you know. Um, into the system here because there is the jamie noguchi system i again i'm probably making this a bigger thing than it actually is but like looking on your oh yeah on uh on your site uh on monster cutie here like i see the jamie noguchi, noguchi system um <laughs> with with the trademark and it's uh, it's so simplistic but it's also <laughs> like yeah you know yeah i'm gonna because <laughs> like it's you mentioned it earlier and like i've seen it in um where did I see it? Oh, it's gone. It's disappeared. Now I'm going to look like a fool. Um, oh, there it is. Um, like the, the, uh, the f I'm going to swear here. The fucking do it Friday. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like with the Jamie Noguchi system, like, did you do it? And yes or no. And fucking do it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it, it's so simple, but it's yeah. so j just fucking do it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we have a website too. Like, if you go to fucking do dot it, uh, it's an interactive website. It works on mobile too. So, like, oh my know, god, hold it's on, it's a I'm nice here. little reminder to tell yourself to fucking do the thing. Did you do it? I'm gonna say no. Oh, the <laughs> fucking do it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> this now is what? the most brilliant thing I've ever seen on the internet. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're ever debating, um. You know, if you should do it, mm -hmm. just go to fucking do f u c k i n d o dot i t, and you can it'll it'll walk you through the steps on on doing it. Patent pending, <laughs> <laughs> our patent pending system. So, is there a thing behind that, or it, like 
I, I kind of want to know where that came from. Yeah, it's um, so Ross kind of made the first chart um, <laughs> because I like, you know, Ross Ross lives near me, so we would often drive to conventions and things together. And one day he was complaining about like he he had this idea for this comic that it would all be um, those design symbols that you see, the generic design symbols that you see for like man, woman, caution, th- th- that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was going on and on about like, yeah, I want to do this, but you know, all this stuff. And I, and I just, I got fed up with him. I said, <laughs> Ross, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Just stop talking about it and fucking do the thing. And very next week, his first system comic came out and oh. he's been doing it ever since. Um, and so, I I don't know. It's just something I say all the time, and he he kind of turned it into a bigger deal than it w- really was. Um, we did a, a fucking do it panel at Kineticon one year, actually, really as a as a joke, but it <laughs> turned into this like kind of weird affirmation thing where people were real excited about like doing a thing because the whole the whole premise of, of it is obviously fucking do it, but like we live in an era where there are very few gatekeepers left to prevent you from doing a thing. Mm. Like if you want to make a movie um, and you don't have the financing, you know, you have an iPhone yeah. or you can, you can do like crowdfunding if it's a good enough idea. Like if you want to be a broadcaster, you don't have to you know go to a job at a radio station. You can broadcast online like you, you guys are doing like, mm-hmm. what is it? 220 some episodes or 252. Yep. Yeah. 252 yeah see like um you know with the the spread of technology you don't have to wait for marvel or dc or image to print your book or or to accept your submission if you have a superhero idea just fucking make one up and then publish it online or spend the money and get you know physical copies done but like the whole idea is that like the only thing stopping you from doing a thing these days is you so um it started out as a joke and then <laughs> it turns out that people actually thought it was useful. So. See, I'm, I'm picturing you here like at Kineticon with like a packed panel room with like a spotlight on you with like, it's like a Tony Robbins type situation, <laughs> yeah, like with yeah. the, with the mic coming over the cheek and like, you know, just like really very inspirational, not necessarily like, you know, touching people and healing their wounds, <laughs> but yeah. like, you know, just inspiring. You know, I wish we could well, have seen that panel. It, it was funny because, like, the the first fifteen minutes, we uh, I just talked about the origins, like the you know Ross, um, you know, complaining and and whining like he does all the time, <laughs> and then uh, the rest of it, we just asked people in the audience, like, what is the thing that you want to do? And they would say, well, I want to, I want to do this. I want to, you know, I want to write comics, and we would give them suggestions, like, well, you know go out and find people in your community, like set up a meetup group or, you know, set up something online, go out there and do a thing. So, you know, most of the panel was just us asking people in the audience what they wanted to do and Hmm. trying to come up with a a unique way to to solve their problem. I have no idea if any of them actually did the thing, but I hope some of them did. (laughs) I feel like this is the best, like, final word to an asshole because cause the asshole is a person who will like ask for your advice and like oh, I want to do the thing, but like yeah. and you they had you, no intent you, and of like, actually you, doing you it. You can just yeah. dump truck uh, advice on them and like and you know maybe you could try this and try that and just advice and like ideas and thoughts and things because you want to help them. Right. And then they go, eh, no, no, that's gonna work, and they don't do anything <laughs> of what you offered. So yeah. they're being an asshole. <laughs> And so, like, the last nail in the coffin would be to just do it. Right. But I don't want to. Well, then why are you here? <laughs> you the, just wasted yeah, my you, time. You clearly do not want to do it. <laughs> or you want someone else to do it for you, and then you can say you did it. Or something. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, if you want to do it, you know, I, I have I have, I have a website I can refer you to. <laughs> <laughs> We had the dumb idea of like trying to turn it into like a business, like um, an app where it would you would set a reminder for yourself, and then 
like I, you know, me yelling at you like fucking do it and as a <laughs> as a wave file would pop up when it was time for you to do the thing. And then there would be like tier system, like if you needed somebody to call you, like we would call you <laughs> at a certain time and yell at you to do the thing. And I'm not know. I'm not trying to turn your own advice on 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 to you here, Jamie, <laughs> but I believe that you should fucking do that because that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was that was the other question. Is like, would anyone buy into this idiotic thing if you were actually calling people up and saying, "Did you do it? No, fucking do it," <laughs> and like hanging up. This is definitely going to get used like down the line when one of when either me or Jr. is like, "Hey, did you uh, reserve the table for the convention yet?" Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm already eyeing what size poster I want because you can get you can get fucking do it on the poster. Um, you can get up to a up to a two foot by three foot. So, um, that would be good for the office if if, if you asked me. But um, Jamie, I, I don't know if you knew this. We have a habit of um, of really just gushing, so you'll have to excuse oh, cool. us. It's <laughs> great; I, it makes you feel good. <laughs> I have a question about some of your work that I've seen. It's on some of the T-shirts on your Monster Cutie site, and mm. it's been coming up on Instagram about like the hideous, terrifying skulls with a cute little face on the top of it. Yeah, where where'd those come <laughs> from? <laughs> Uh, my sick, twisted mind. Okay, good, um, good, good. I'm glad that, like, it wasn't from something else. Like, it's it's definitely yours. As and far s- as I can tell, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've been drawing those cute little monsters for, you know, like, thank you cards or, if, you know, um, friends are just doodling in the corner or just making something quick, mm-hmm. cute little monster things. And um, I used to draw these really intricate tattoos on their arms. Um, and then I decided that it would be much more fun if like they're really cute, but then if they were attacked or ever fearful (laughs) that they would be surrounded by this hideous creature. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's where the first couple designs came from. Just like this weird squid monster with a really little cute thing in the middle. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Cause, uh, I like mixing cute and horrifying things together. Just cause. <laughs> Do you really need a reason? I guess you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it absolutely has an audience because I've met people who like think like the grossest stuff is the most adorable things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I also appreciate is how, uh, like, your your speed drawings and and what you're putting up for your, uh, what did you call it? Your hour. Oh yeah, the hour session. The- yeah, the hour session. And yeah. like you could see like you making one of these skulls like right there on this video. And like uh, that's one of the things I also I keep going back to Instagram cuz like it's so new to me. Like so many artists are like I'm just going to show you like, you know, a minute of me inking these lines on Spider-Man's head or something. But then you feel like you're designing this entire skull and you're doing the line work, but you're also doing shading. And it's like as someone who cannot art at all, watching you like just but it goes so fast that it seems effortless. Oh, you know, yeah. like you're doing all oh, this thanks. work. Yeah, it looks really cool. And it's it's a far cry too from like what we initially like. You know, when we watch like a super art fight show, oh, like yeah, yeah. you guys are just slamming stuff down <laughs> like as quick as you can. You know, like it's it's you you have a limited amount of time to get this idea down onto the canvas and get your get your joke out you know, get the laugh and, you know, keep moving and stuff like that. So like, and then to go and see, like, you know, I've seen it from, uh, from, from your work and a lot of the other artists, you know, who, who we've seen on super Art, like just what you guys are really, what else you guys are capable of, mm-hmm. you know, it, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, uh, it's easy to forget like, Oh my God, that was so funny. That was an enormous penis, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, and then, like you see, you know what else is there? It's it's really um like especially like it, it happens every year going down the line of tables at Connecticut. I'm like, oh shit, like <laughs> this is significantly different than what I saw last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Our um the the canvases have the canvas quality is is not reflective of what we can do uh, in our personal work. We used to do hour long art fights, so the disconnect was much less apparent like 
Um, and it was 10 minutes between topics. So that gave you a lot more time to spend doing an idea and then rendering it a little bit more than we do now. Hmm. Um, now the bouts are 25 minutes. You get five minutes in between. And most of the show is really about audience interaction. So like right. the drawing is secondary. Um, no, don't let my, my, I don't know, is candor the word? I can't, I don't know the right word. Cause it's, <laughs> the art is still both amazing, hilarious, mm-hmm. and better than anything I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> um, and there might be some of it hanging up in this very house. There is. There uh, definitely oh, is. cool. <laughs> oh, I, I have a canvas from, I think, two years ago. It, yeah, it was Kineticon oh, nice. two years ago. And it's, uh, it was about between El Russo Rojo and Catherine Salsa Verde. Oh, nice. It started with robots. And it and it kept there's butts in there and I think there's a life held in there. <laughs> in Muppets. Yeah. But anyways. So there are, there are no legs on that canvas if it's life held, right? No legs. No legs. No feet. I think there there was definitely pouches showed up at some point. Unless that was the bout before that. I don't I can't remember. Cause you I think you bought it because I had cause the floor was closing soon. So I watched the first were there, I can't remember if there's two or three the, bouts. There's three, and this was the middle one. Right. I yeah. watched the first one, and then I had to bail to go check the floor because it was closing like, yeah, yeah, yeah. during the, the vendor. And there was yeah, something yeah. I wanted to buy. Yep. Um, so I missed out, and then you show up with like this giant. <laughs> I was like, "You did you you bought something? What what is that?" <laughs> Which, anyway, man, like the first the first like fifty hours when it's still rolled up, and if you don't unroll it. The marker fumes are just. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I can't imagine I didn't like think be, about that. Being, oh yeah, because like it 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 traps them all in that tube. <laughs> It'll it really wallops you <laughs> if you just like take a whiff. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy! Because <laughs> those are those are real big sharpies. Oh, they're they're, they're fist f- size. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're bad when it's not rolled up, man. They're bad on stage. Like, uh, we've had we've had times where Ross has almost fainted because the markers smell so bad. Really, <laughs> but um, but yes, I I, I did interrupt. Um, you know, r- regarding like the uh, the difference between like the canvas and then like uh, you know your own personal work. Like Alex had mentioned, you know, seeing like how it's it looks so effortless and. Um, you know, like significantly different, you know, like from what you see on the canvas and then like the, the stuff that you really have the time to just sit there and just put, you know, all your talent into, I guess, for, for lack of a better mm. term. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nicer to have uh, an hour to just kind of screw around and then uh, compressing that into like 10 minutes and then taking those 10 <laughs> minutes and further compressing it makes it look so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Do you have a preference in like what medium you work in? Like if it's physical pencil or digital or, or sculpting, like do you favor one over the other? Or like, cause I find for artists, some, sometimes their ideas, they can manifest it one way. And other times you're just like, I have so many ideas. I just want to express it in every way possible. Um, I think, I think I prefer working with ink on page, mm-hmm. which is weird because most of my work is digital now. Like, um, the, the, the sculpting is definitely a lot of digital. Um, all my contract work right now is, is much easier and quicker doing it digitally. Um, but like, I don't know. I really like using a brush and just a regular ink and, and going to town on the piece. Um, that's, that's, it's part of the reason why I started to incorporate brush work into my art fighting. Mm. Um, Cause I, I miss the brush and, you know, I have more control, which is weird because there's a certain amount of, um, chaos when you're using a brush. Cause the, the tip doesn't always do what you want it to do. Yeah. And you just kind of have to live with it. <laughs> um, so it's fun. It's fun using that on stage cause then, you know, it's quicker, faster. And I just, and, and the secret is the ink I use is a lot darker than the Sharpie ink. So my stuff sticks out more than anyone else's. <laughs> I was happy when you said brush too, because that it validates the shirt that we <laughs> yeah. almost that we almost purchased directly off your back. Um, with the and like I knew um, like as soon as our, our friend Colin um, big into big into wrestling, mm-hmm. especially oh, yeah. especially uh, uh, I'm probably gonna butcher the Shinsuke Nakamura. Is that his name? Nakamura. 
<laughs> yes. He loves that man. And like when he saw the shirt, like we went to, I think it was Unleashed the night before. Mm-hmm. It was like the first night on Friday night. Um, mm-hmm. And like he initially saw that shirt. He was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like he was immediately like rooting. It was, it was good. Um, and I was like, what? What does that mean? Because <laughs> I am, uh, I am in the dark when it comes to to that, especially because he's still, he's in NXT. Is is that he's yeah. he's still there? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. NXT. Yeah. Um. So like, unless it's like Master of Strong Style, right? So that's of, his thing. Yeah, King of Strong he Style. He works really stiff. Which is basically knee to the face, as far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you need anything else? You know, like is <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're gone once you get a knee into the head. You just <laughs> fall on the floor. <laughs> oh man, good old wrestling. Remember when I thought it was real, like when I was a kid, and it was like a <laughs> shocking revelation when it was not real. But it's still like, no, maybe it's real. <laughs> Mankind just well, hit out- Jim Ross with the mandible claw. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Well, the outcomes are predetermined, but a lot of them do take some nasty bumps. Oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. One of the, than me. One of, in pre-show, one of the things we had mentioned, because occasionally our guest is like, oh, I hope I'm entertaining enough. And one, <laughs> of, the, one of the things we had mentioned in pre-show was like, on the, on the drive home, we are watching you guys on uh, a... <laughs> You, the, you guys were driving back the, to, the to Baltimore, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Kineticons, and like it's the they were doing the Facebook Live thing, and like you were just talking about um, Common Rider, Cayman Rider. I I don't remember. Yeah, Common Rider, Common Rider. Like you were just going on this whole like explanation of part of the story, and like I, you had we my, were huddled around your phone watching it. <laughs> you had my full attention. <laughs> Roof chickens, man. Roof chickens. <laughs> he just hits these eggies on his face. I was like, he's calling up eggies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The like, only the only other it, experience it, I have with with common riders was there was a year at Comic Con where a vendor had like exclusive figures, and I was like, can I flip those? But I had no idea what the source material was, so I didn't buy any. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you could have. You could have. I, I, I know a guy who might have bought them. <laughs> 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 um but yeah common so if you're familiar with power rangers mm-hmm. common rider is sort of like the the brother show to super sentai so power rangers is taken from super sentai uh which is um an annual show um it's always a different team they have a different different suits different powers and it's always five plus so like there's five main rangers and then there's always like a a guest ranger or an extra ranger and then so um Kamen Rider is it's in the same genre so it's called tokusatsu which means like special effects. So mm-hmm. Godzilla is considered tokusatsu, Ultraman is tokusatsu, Super Sentai is tokusatsu and then Kamen Rider is tokusatsu. And the difference between Kamen Rider and Super Sentai is Kamen Rider is usually a, a central hero who transforms with a belt and has a bike hence Kamen Rider. Mm-hmm. And um there's more it, it's essentially a half hour toy commercial um, <laughs> every week it, they come out with a new transformation device or a new form or a secondary writer that comes to be the antagonist slash helper of the main common writer uh-huh. and they have a different suit and they have different forms too so like it, the entire show is based on toys and mm-hmm. I get that <laughs> but I still love it <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so the the one, yeah, so they're, every year they come out with a new common writer. I think the one I was talking about was this this show that called Common Writer Amazons mm-hmm. that premiered on Jap- Amazon Japan. So it was a common writer show specifically made for Amazon, which is <laughs> weird, called Amazons, um, which is a tribute to like an old Showa era common writer show. I'm like. I really should do my own goddamn podcast about Kamen Rider because this is going to go on for another hour. <laughs> I think we're listening to like the genesis of it. You know, like this is where it all began. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's great. It's basically a man in a mask punching things. How can you not like that? Awesome. Cause and that even carried over because uh, at least one of the figures I saw they are working on is inspired by, or also a sculpture that looked yeah, am- yeah. amazing and terrifying. 
Because the uniform's eating his own face. Yeah, yeah. I like to I like to do that a lot. <laughs> Fucked up shit. It was it was cool. It was really cool. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what this is, but I kind of want to own this. Like, if this statue gets made, I would, I think I might want it just because of like how it looks. The neck was really nice too. <laughs> it's one of those things where like you'll have people over and you get to watch their reaction on <laughs> on them seeing it. Mm-hmm. Like, they're you know you get to watch them figure it out. Yeah. And struggle. And then they say, "What's this?" And I go, "I don't know." Well, like you know, maybe maybe look at it a little bit more, see if you can if you can absorb its message. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, as we uh, as we wind down here, um, Jamie, uh, I like I, I mentioned a bunch of we've we've talked about a lot of different places where people can see your stuff. Um, I don't know if you wanted to say like you can you can find my work here. Um, you know, like you you mentioned that your comic is going on a hiatus, but still you can go read it um, mm-hmm. at uh, ypcomic.com. Where else can people find your stuff? Uh, my stuff, uh, I post regularly on Instagram. So um, things that I'm working on or just sketches or just ideas. So um, uh, my Instagram is Jamie Noguchi, J-A-M-I-E-N-O-G-U-C-H-I. Um I guess my webcomic and my Instagram are the easiest ways to follow. Oh, uh, Twitter, Angry Zen Master. <laughs> Which is, of course, your alter ego when, yeah. when fighting with the art. Um, <laughs> but it's really just me just yelling. I'm okay with that. Loud, loudly. <laughs> and stopping um, and possibly breaking stages. <laughs> and breaking stages, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm surprised we haven't broken more. I guess, I, I guess they know. When these assholes come to town, reinforce the stage, please. <laughs> um, Don't forget yeah, about I think uh, my comic and Instagram, that's that's the best way to see my stuff. But there's also your your more exclusive stuff on the, the Patreon. Oh, right. Duh. I'm really bad at this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have a Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash Jamie Noguchi, um, where I've been posting the full hour um our sessions so you can um see me methodically draw the same thing over and over again <laughs> instead of the compressed you know 10 minute version um but is, like there's full commentary um descriptions of what i'm doing why i'm doing certain things the tools that i use and the various programs that i use so it gives you a more in-depth version of of the the compressed and then uh i think the upper tiers you get um, the full resolution of that video that you can download and mm-hmm. keep for watching later. So if you're into that kind of stuff, that's really cool. Cause it's like a difference between other artists that have Patreons. And it's like every month you get a, a print, I guess it's like, Oh, that's <laughs> it. And cause the difference is where if you want to become an artist, like it's a learning resource. If yeah. you get to watch someone else, like, use a system or program i'm using this because yeah 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 yeah. It, it that would make all the difference for some people that's really cool so and, go check it out you can also um see him sometimes on the stage uh fighting with arts um with super art fight which i know the site because i've heard it many times normally with two people saying it at the same time <laughs> right um, right super art fight dot com dot com um <laughs> there yep there it is um do you guys have any uh, have any shows upcoming um, that you're able to plug, or should I just shut up about Super Effort right now? Oh, let's oh see. no! <laughs> Where's my calendar? Where's my calendar? Um, do, 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 do. We have one. We're going to be at Katsukon. Um, Where is in Katsukon? February. I've been hearing a Katsu- lot about yeah. upcoming Katsukon. Yeah, Katsukon is in um, at the Gaylord where Magfest is. I don't know if you guys do Magfest. Um, it's- but it's at the Gaylord in DC. Oh, okay. Um, so that they, we actually did our first, Nick and I f- did our first quote unquote art fight. They used to do this thing called um, Iron Artist, where they give an artist an hour and a topic to draw a thing. And Nick and I did that one year and everything went wrong. So we decided to, <laughs> to screw with the format a little bit and run over to each other's stuff and draw on it. Huh. And that's sort of kind of the, the seed that grew this mess we call super art fight Mm -hmm. um we are going to be doing the auto bar back in baltimore um march 18th 
And uh, I think we are also appearing at AwesomeCon this year. Um, uh, I think that's June. June 16th? I think it's June. Whenever AwesomeCon is. Do you guys do AwesomeCon? That's one of those shows where the name doesn't designate where it is, so we, we're clueless. <laughs> That's in oh that yeah that's in DC awesome con okay. DC that's a ways away from us yeah it's so like when 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 the name is like Boston Comic Con we're like oh it's in Boston right <laughs> yeah <laughs> luckily like we know where Connecticut is thankfully yeah uh, <laughs> being that it's twenty minutes down the road for us but like when we hear Super Mega Fest like I needed a friend to explain to me like so where 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 is Super <laughs> Mega Fest even where even the even the enormous place? ones where's Where's Dragon Dragon Con? <laughs> is that is that in Westeros? No, it's in Atlanta. It's in Atlanta. That's that's my best joke I've ever made, by the way. Is that in Pern? <laughs> you know, con on Pern. <laughs> but before we go, I kind of i I don't I kind of want to ask about the puppy cow. Oh sure, but I also still want to be confused by it. <laughs> like, okay, I'm not sure if I want the answer. To what the puppy cow is. You know, it's only $10. Maybe you should just grab one and and try to decipher it yourself. (laughs) Just. He looks so concerned. (laughs) Like, why? Why is this? (laughs) It does does look adorable. Yeah. But, um. I, uh, that, that was a, that was a sketch that I did at, uh, Kanatacon. Um, I was, a friend of mine was complaining about their brush pen that she hated it. Because it was one of those uh, weird natural ones that are way too expensive, mm-hmm. so I was just dicking around with it, and I came up with this puppy cow thing, and everyone around the table was like, "Man, that should be a plush toy." <laughs> I was like, "You guys are assholes," <laughs> but I'll see if it'll happen. And now so it's a plush I toy. I kickstarted it, and enough people who were not my friends wanted to buy it. So, <laughs> and so now you can now you can buy it tall. too. Brings horror yeah. delight to people all over the world with a hearty, rough, rough moo. Yeah. It's a puppy cow with the hearty, yeah. rough, rough moo. Is that what it says? <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. There's a theme song too. Oh, there's a little video accompanying it. That's yeah, great. yeah. I did a theme song for it. <laughs> That's everything I needed. There's more behind this puppy cow than I ever imagined. I thought it was just like, oh, hey, here's a thing that was like in a web comic once just or something. Putting together like, two weird things. No, no. Here, let us delve into the lore. <laughs> Of puppy cow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I got to hang out with two people earlier today, and Victoria Miller cosplay is super jealous that I'm talking to you uh, tonight. Oh, cool! Yeah. As as is uh, the vulgar seamstress. Oh, who, nice. They're often found together. They both cosplayers. Yeah, and yeah, we, they're fun. It was great meeting them uh, at the show. Which would. Th- I want to explain for a second, like one of the times, like we got to know you guys a bit better than just like standing outside next to your table, being like, "Hey guys, your stuff is cool." Like, we're not leaving you. <laughs> you want to come on our podcast? We just met you at a show in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we t- after the sh- after the convention one night, we were across the street at a barbecue place, and the at- barbecue place, <laughs> by the yeah. bears, the oh barbecue my- place. Oh my god, bears! Is so just like heaven. our group of misfits happened to run into the group that was you guys, and Mikey Bracco and Chalmers and and Ross and and Marty were all there and everything. <laughs> it's like we ended up hanging out and talking for like two hours, and it's like we're cool enough to chill with these dudes and like. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're just easy. Hanging, if they're... you put food in our face, we'll talk to you for like five hours. That's the crazy part. This was after food. Yeah, like everyone yeah. was done, and like we were leaving as you guys were leaving, and then it was like, hey, we sort of recognize you, <laughs> and we were moments ago we were in a crowd cheering for these guys on stage, <laughs> and now like we're trying not to get rained on, <laughs> and we're we're posting pictures of one of them, even though he doesn't know we're posting pictures. Yeah, Russ was. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sees it later. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I mean, we're, we're, we, we, uh, it's always weird because we don't really consider ourselves to be anything other than just us. So, like, if you see us at a show and, um, we're not either trying to sell anything, you know, you can just say, hey, if we blow you off, it's because we either have to take a massive shit or <laughs> we're on our way to doing something else. More than fair. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, usually we're cool. Um, most of us are cool. Ross I, is an asshole, so you know, <laughs> stay away from him. But <laughs> to be fair, he has p- people taking pictures of him all the time. Yeah, yeah. sometimes in zebra pants. 
<laughs> yeah. But um Zubaz. Yeah, Zubaz. Um <laughs> I I think we're going to be working with them in some capacity in the future, but uh <laughs> I got to keep that under wraps. But yeah, Zubaz pants. We love them. Um, <laughs> Vicky reminded me to do the secret handshake, but I, he's not going to see it, Vicky. It's audio yeah, only. Audio. <laughs> She's like, well, and just do do the slap and then do the thing. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> if you don't know, you got to go to a you show. You got to go to a show. We, go to yeah, we got to hit that barbecue joint next year because uh, it's the only place to get good food in that fucking town. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, pretty it's, much. But that isn't going to cost you like $80 the a plate. The entire city. Um, that's all we got. Yeah, Lung- and City there was- Steam. I'm fucking tired of City Steam, man. Oh my god, <laughs> is that the bar that, like right next door? Yeah, is it where we tried to go in and then they're like, oh, actually, there's a cover. And we're no, like, no, this no. is down the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. every fucking year, every after party is at the fucking City Steam, and like, I don't drink, but I also don't like their food. Neither do we. So, yep, yep. It's it's on the other side of the Science Museum. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. My high school reunion tried to be there. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. Yeah. No, yep. thank you. Um, but if, <laughs> if you want to find out where most of the guests are hanging out, it's probably at the fucking city steam. <laughs> yeah. If you ever want to go lurk. <laughs> but also, if you're ever at Kineticon and you're looking for good food, go to Bears. Bears Barbecue. Mm-hmm. By the yeah. way, so there's a second location for Bears in, uh, oh. in Windsor Locks, which is like literally... 10 minutes down the road from Hartford. Pretty much. Um, that was within walking distance from my parents' house, <laughs> which was very dangerous. <laughs> Extreme, so good. Extremely dangerous. Um, yeah. But now I live a couple towns over, so it's, it's, it's for the best. But, you know, like, go to Bears, by the way. Bears, it, it, I'm not even getting yeah. paid to say this right now. <laughs> um, it's just yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's so delicious. Anyways. Yeah. If you um, want to find Super Art Fight, we'll be there, <laughs> or at our table, or at the show. And I can verify or like, barbecue. <laughs> I've even seen art fighters outside of like natural habitat at other shows. Like mm-hmm. Vicky ran into um, ran into Mike Brocco once at New York and mm-hmm. like screamed his name and she, caught. Like, she, was like, she couldn't like form the words at first because like she kind of <laughs> recognized somebody and he kind of like recognized her but didn't know where she was in a different costume she was cosplaying. And so yeah, she was yeah. like, Super Fight! <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what? She's like, you're Super Art Fight. He's like, he wasn't there for Super Art Fight. He was right. there for, for his stuff. And he's like, you recognize <laughs> yeah, yeah. me here among everything else? That's near a common guy. And she's like, yeah, you're the Baron. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no shit. I was walking around um, Boston Comic Con uh, last August mm-hmm. um, wearing my, I was in my Ross Suck shirt, which is, for the record, God, that shirt is comfortable. That yeah. shirt. Oh, yeah. I will gladly, because it was a little more expensive than, like, the regular shirts. The mm-hmm. other, just buy that shirt. Fuck. It's so comfortable. Anyways, I'm not even getting paid <laughs> to say this either. It's the most comfortable shirt. And I'm, like, walking around, and I, like, I noticed a booth that looked very familiar, and it was, and it was Mike Brocco. And I was, like, where's the rest of the gang? And he immediately took a selfie with me, and I was, like, okay. <laughs> you guys are rad. You guys are rad. Um Oh, thanks. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jamie, I, I will say it was an absolute pleasure having you on. I appreciate you. Um, like we set this up literally like within hours, which was super rad of you to do. Um, yeah, hell yeah! Thanks for having me. Um, Thank you. Hopefully, uh, you know, I've it's it's a ways down the road, but hopefully, maybe we'll see you at Kineticon this year. Um, if not, maybe uh, a random show in New Jersey again. Although you weren't there for that, which was that was a while ago. Mm, that was yeah, yeah, long long time what was that was um was it a wild pig con or something? no it was voltaire's wicked necro comic con yeah it was a sister oh, show to wicked fair yeah and i think it was uh like james hatton brought him in yep yeah hatton you guys yeah. know hatton we know I, I of him i don't know him personally but like <laughs> i we go to a lot of shows that he's also at so oh okay yeah because like, he he got up because we had it was total happenstance too. We like I had never been to the show like because it was Wicked Fair and Voltaire's Wicked Necro Comic Con. They were like sister shows running at the same time at two different hotels. It was it was basically mm-hmm. the same event but two different places. And like Alex and I oh, went wow. to check it out because he'd been to Wicked Fair a couple times. Um, I tagged along with him and we were at the thing. He's like, "Hey, there's this thing Super Art Fight that I want to check out." Like I saw a description in, in the yeah. guidebook or something. And like- we we snuck in for the Unleashed show like right as it was about to start. And I was like, what the fuck are we watching? <laughs> <laughs> like, there it was, was like five minutes and I was like, hey, do you, do you want to go or do you want to stay for this? And she was like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> it was 
beautiful and for like a solid like 10 minutes i legitimately thought that mike brago had uh, uh eastern <laughs> european accent, accent. Um, oh my god yeah and then someone pulled a camera out and everyone started yelling and i was like oh he doesn't have an accent <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um and then we saw the show the next day um and uh and hatton got up and he mentioned that he like you know, anyways that that's our that's our fun little story mm-hmm. um cool but if it, essentially, long story short, um, look, go look at all of Jamie's stuff, and then buy his stuff, and then go to a super art fight show, buy their stuff, and then go see them like at their tables, and then buy more of their stuff. Is essentially what I'm yes. getting at. If there's any money left over, we have pins. <clears throat> yes, you can also get an OMV pin. Uh, hit up Alex at OMVPodcast.com. Get get yourself a pin. They're they're five dollars. Um, and they're pins. Nice. I always I always have to reiterate they're pins. They're not fucking buttons. <laughs> these these aren't buttons. We didn't stamp them no, in a pin. button machine. They are pins. Yeah, pins they're... are better. Pins are better. Oh, Metal so pins. Oh, my so God. Better. They're so much better. I mean, there's nothing wrong with buttons. <laughs> buttons are okay. You know? Like, they're chill. These are pins. Anyways, Jamie, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, hopefully, we'll see you in a couple months, maybe at Kineticon. If not, uh, yeah. we'll, I, we're, we're going to have to get down to the Autobar someday. Yeah, definitely. Some, yeah, like, man. That's, like, on on the list because, like, is. we see all the pictures. That's, like, your home territory, you mm-hmm. know? Oh, um, yeah. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get down there sometime soon. Um, but uh, go to all the websites we said earlier and uh, support um, good people. Uh, Jamie, thanks again. Um, best of yeah, luck thanks. in the future and, 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 and with the figures and with the arts and all that stuff. It was, uh, I personally, I had a blast. <laughs> I had a fun too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, that is going to do it for this week. Uh, until next time, I was JR. I'm Alex. I'm Jamie. And this has been episode, I already forgot, 252, there it is, of Opinions May Vary.